movie was the epitome of dumb characters. But I definitely enjoyed the visuals and the adventure, and now you guys get to share in some of that while we talk about the zaniness of this movie. We get some nice visuals over Scotland, or I think what will become Scotland, and there's a big alien ship leaving the atmosphere or getting ready to. There is a cut where the strange alien human thing is with others, and they give him this thing to drink, and then they leave. He takes off his, his shirt. God damn. Jesus Christ. Those gains, though. And after he drinks this strange liquid that seems to have a mind of its own, he dies a very horrible death. It starts changing his DNA, more specifically, breaking it down. After he completely falls apart and turns into a pile of ash, he lands in the water below. And I guess with the microbes in the water, it reforms his DNA as something else. Prometheus. Set in 2089, Elizabeth Shaw and Charlie Holloway and their team in Scotland discover some ancient drawings by humans, and it gives them clues into the star map or ancient celestial beings, which are probably an explanation as to where humans came from. This shot is so cool. It's a spaceship flying around in space, and you never really think about how it looks. You always see the ship kind of like flying, but from your point of view. So it's really cool that they added that shot. I don't know what about it makes it so beautiful to me. It just, you just see the vastness of space and even though this thing is I'm sure flying really really fast that little bit of space that we're seeing right now is so minuscule when compared to the vastness of the universe. So they set off on their ship called the Prometheus. Interesting because that's the title of the movie. While everyone is sleeping we get to see my favorite character in the whole movie because I know he's played by Michael Fassbender. He's freaking amazing. I did notice throughout the movie he's looking a lot at Dr. Elizabeth Shaw. Hmm will a romance Romance happened between them, I wonder. But she's married, I hear you say, but in space, no one can hear you cheat. He looks into her memories. Oh, I know him. He studies a language and he keeps himself entertained. He also eats. He's eating. He's eating. I just want to point that out that he's eating. Sir, is not minding that it hurts. Is not minding that it hurts. That scene right there, I don't remember seeing that at all. There's a lot about this I don't remember seeing. And it just occurred to me that he modeled his whole personality, or at least his look anyway, after whoever that actor was. Very peculiar. The ship informs David, who is an android by the way, that they're close to their destination. As David is walking back, he sees wet footprints and finds out that somebody's awake. Turns out to be my girl, Charlize Theron. She seems like the captain. She asks him if there's any casualties and if anyone has died. When he says that there's been none, she tells him to go and wake them up. <laughs> So the rest of the crew wakes up. We meet Elizabeth Shaw, who is the main character. She's experiencing a stasis sickness. And we meet her husband, who looks like the dude who plays Venom, uh, Eddie Brock. What's his name again? And he also plays Bane. Anyway, this guy kind of reminds me of him. We meet the beloved Idris Alba, who is the captain of the, or pilot of the plane ship. And this woman, who is basically funding the whole expedition, played by Charlie Theron, who we saw earlier. We meet some of the other ragtag characters, like this geologist who looks like he's a member of Team Rocket, and the scientist over here, who was told by that guy that he doesn't want to be friends with him when he sits at his table. Everyone's called together to watch a meeting, this woman called Vickers is like, all right, guys, here is our boss who is dead by now, which is why he's doing this projection like Dr. Hammond. And he's like, the stars, these aliens, you know, these people, Dr. Shaw and her husband, as far as you're concerned, they're your boss. And they told us that they're freaking aliens or these things, which we call the engineers, that want us to come and find them. So listen to them. My face is falling off of itself. So as the two Shaws take over, they continue talking about the engineers and why they're here because of all these pictures that basically show the same thing, some kind of star map or sign, which is what's going to lead them to the distant moon LV-223, which is where they are going and basically where they are now. And we arrived there this morning. So you're saying we're here because of a map you two kids found in a cave, is that right? No. Yeah. <laughs> While that's funny, I can't help but thinking... Why does the redhead not know why he's here? I mean, he does say later on that he's a geologist. Wouldn't you want to know what you're taking a job for? to even know if you're qualified to take that job. And if you're only taking it for money, why is this an issue? Why do you care? Not a map, an invitation. From whom? So I like how she says, our creators. And then you see the look, see the look on his face. He's like, they engineered us. 
starts rethinking his decision. Dude, you're already here. You knew that it was going to be something crazy. You decide to go, so can't blame anyone but yourself. It's cool as they're about to touch down on the planet because you can actually see a storm off to the left that is forming. David brings Elizabeth Shaw and Charlie Holloway to meet Miss Vickers, who's funding the operation. Dr. Shaw is like, oh my god, it's a cool machine that can do surgery on you. Not like that's not going to be important later. Then she has to quickly put them in their place. What do you need it for? I think there might be some confusion about our relationship. Fairly certain your engineers are nothing but scribblings of savages living in dirty little caves. Why is she so hostile? Like, there's always gotta be that one person in the movies who's freaking hostile for no good reason. She's like, look, if they're real, which I don't think they are, you do not talk to these things. She may seem like a dirtbag by saying this, but that's probably a good idea. Anyway, they touch down the planet, stratosphere, whatever, it looks really cool. I don't know why this woman reminds me of Daddy Longneck. Like, for me, they look very much alike. One thing I will give this movie, though, is how beautiful visually it is. Like, when we're looking at the storms in the background of some alien planet, it looks freaking awesome. Also, I don't understand what kind of ship this is, where you would have literal glass underneath you as the pilot. Just saying, if you're trying to control the landing for this thing, and something decides to come up through the ground, it's way easier to get through this than the majority of the material the ship is made of. They make a miraculous finding, because God doesn't build in straight lines apparently they're like look look at those mountainous weird things all in one line and they land there they immediately get to it to explore the area shaw doesn't want weapons because that makes sense going to a place that has life on it and you're sure now that it had life on it you can't be sure what kind of predators or other animals you have on the planet why would you not carry something to defend yourself with what i find interesting is the entire time holloway shaw's husband is always treating david with such disrespect Yes, we're aware that he's a synthetic. Why are you continuously taking jabs at him like, hey, you don't need to breathe, so why are you wearing that? And it's not just the fact that he says it, it's the way that he says it that's like so unnecessary. If there was ever a reason you wanted robots to rise up against you, you're really helping them to feel motivated to do so. Why wear a suit? Because you people are more comfortable interacting with your own kind. If I didn't wear the suit, it would defeat the purpose. Making you guys pretty close, huh? Not too close, I hope. That was clearly an insult towards Holloway and he didn't even get it. David doesn't want to be anything like humans because he probably thinks they're beneath him or they're flawed. Their adventurous journey becomes more interesting when they realize that this thing that redhead guy starts mapping is not a natural occurrence. It is man-made or alien-made. When they get into a nice little chamber where there's a lot of water and evaporation, they realize that they can breathe. It's a breathable atmosphere. And then this asshole takes off his freaking helmet because that's a freaking good idea idea on an alien planet that you know nothing about to take a big whiff of the air around you oh my god i can't understand the stupidity of the characters in this freaking movie because it makes no goddamn sense you are professional people right you go to an alien world you can't breathe the, the, the air outside for more than two minutes because you'll freaking die but you're like the levels look good in here well let's take a leap for mankind and just do what mankind does which is be being perpetually stupid and take off our helmets so we can breathe in the air and the one doof bag takes it off and he's looking at his wife like he's like come on take it off it's all good don't have to worry about you know these being other humanoids that possibly made us possibly could share some kind of dna with us possibly could have any other airborne illnesses that we can have but let's take off our fucking helmets Woo! <laughs> Come on, honey, take off your helmet too. Just like Adam and Eve, huh? Nudge, nudge, nudge. Want to take a taste of this plum? It's much better than my natural plum. And the one who's telling him not to do it ends up doing it. Not only that, but David starts touching a whole bunch of things that he just knows how to decipher. Then they get this projector reel of these alien things clearly running for their lives away from something. It's not actually there. It's obviously like a recording of theirs. But you know how terrifying it is when they're following these people and then one of them drops dead as he's decapitated by the door why does this look like a video game interface so they find this body and it's all in this exoskeleton type of suit thing and they're like something killed him david the geologist guy is shitting his pants and he's like all right okay so see what see see you know okay all right so here's what the, the deal is i came here to, to look at freaking rocks and now there's a freaking dead body i don't want to stay here because like you know no amount of money even though i took this job knowing that it was going to be potentially 
especially dangerous is gonna make me want to stay here, so I need to go back to the ship. Imagine paying someone. First of all, they don't even know the job they're gonna do, but imagine paying them and having them come with you many light years away from your home to then say at the last minute, yeah, um, so I'm not gonna do the job that you paid me to do because by now in that room where they had the meeting, he would have known that this is probably not something he wanted to do. He gets freaking unhinged and the guy he didn't want to be friends with all of a sudden, he's like, you want to come back with me to ship because I don't want to go alone, but he doesn't actually say that because he's so freaking scared. David starts touching a whole bunch of stuff. I like how these people are in an area that is an alien planet away from their home and their face is in like their face is literally a foot away from what they're investigating and they're like you know what maybe i should not put on a you do that with actual human beings on your planet when you're performing surgery on them or identifying what's wrong with them but you're not doing it with something that is dusty and has been dead for two thousand years and could have some kind of pathogens and you don't know the cause of death really bro without your helmet or a freaking mask it's like a running gag with these dumbass characters now i know people say that if we didn't have dumb characters and we wouldn't have horror movies no you know what's more horrific to me in my opinion when you've done everything that you're supposed to do and shit still goes wrong that's more horrifying than someone literally putting themselves in danger because then you know it's kind of hard to feel afraid for them or feel for them at all because i don't know they put themselves in that situation david opens the door without their permission they find a big ass statue and the decapitated head they step on the dirt and you see these worms momentarily fly around well they're not flying but that's very important i never noticed this the first time i saw this movie that they actually stepped on these worms you're probably thinking ulterior they're just worms what's your deal it becomes important later because then it makes a whole lot of sense with what is about to happen in this room there's all these canisters and this mural that looks very familiar they've changed the atmosphere in the area and stupid ass david as an android you're freaking stupid i don't understand why the android doesn't have more logic than everybody else here he's saying how humans are flawed i mean he doesn't say that now but later he does but yet you are doing the very same thing they're doing i mean i guess they program you to be like them but good grief i figure that the guy at least programmed you to be a little bit better to see things and foresee things and know when not to touch shit but he just touches everything like he's the one that is a driving force behind this touching everything and exposing them to these things and all now they're in this thing you don't know if this is part of the atmosphere as the room that you just came from you saw how in that little alien video recording those things were still wearing their helmets but yet you're not wearing yours anyway this big statue has a schnozzle which means that we're related and the murals start changing and dr shaw at this moment is like oh i guess we've changed the atmosphere we need to get out of here something's wrong those vessels that were in there have started sweating but they didn't notice it only david did then a storm with a whole bunch of tornadoes is forming while shaw and the other girl are putting the head of the alien in a bag and david is noticing Noticing the black goo doing some weird crap. By the way, he doesn't say anything to anyone. The captain of the ship radios in and is like, hey, you guys gotta get back to the ship or we're gonna leave you because there's a storm coming and it's like actually a few storms all belted into one. Then as they're leaving, we see uh, the worms from earlier going into this black gooey stuff or being dragged into it. Then we get this action sequence of the silica storm coming towards them because you know it's dramatic and every show like this has to have it. Every movie, I mean. They all get in, but the head falls off because, yeah, we're running pell-mell and a storm is coming, but let's not secure it. The very important artifact that we have with us. Let's not hook it over our arm or secure it like in your lap or something. Let's just, you know, let it figure itself out. <laughs> Dr. Holloway went after his wife and David saves them both. I like this next part because Elizabeth Shaw's husband understandably is yelling at her because he was scared he almost lost her. She would have done the same to him. But I imagine in that time, I mean, I think his nerves are just getting him, but in that moment, she didn't want to hear him yelling at her. She wanted him to ask if she was okay. And then David kind of shows him up and it's the look that he gives David that's the most hilarious thing in the world. You could have compromised the entire mission, not to mention almost killing yourself. Are you all right? Yes. Thank you, David. My pleasure. Maybe you got rid of that old yee-yee ass haircut you got, you get some bitches on your dick. 
Meanwhile, Fifield and Milburn, the redhead and the other scientist guy, are left behind. And the captain of the ship is like, uh, you guys are just gonna have to hole up for the night because, uh, the storm is brewing right now. Like, it's not even brewing. It's, like, full-fledged. So we can't get you. So, uh, sucks to be you. Good night. Shaw, David, Vickers, and the other... Scottish girl. They're, they're working on the alien head. They realize it's an alien helmet. David figures out how to open it because he's an android and he knows everything. And we see the head. There are these weird looking cell growth on it. Her face is so freaking close when you're, you're, I can't, you, God almighty. <laughs> Oh, God almighty, why are you doing this? Aren't you the one that told her husband, or whomever the frick he is to you, I'm assuming it's the husband because they both have rings, to put on his helmet, but then she is the one that took her helmet off after him, like an idiot. And now, you are trying to ascertain what killed these people. Why did the guy fall? What was he running from? What led him to get decapitated? And you get these pulsating, weird-ass looking things that look like spores underneath his skin, flipping around and doing the merengue on his skull and you're gonna open your freaking mouth and have your face inches from his dead head what is wrong with these people this is an alien life form bro it's not even in you know how like at least in the, the movie life with calvin they have calvin in a sealed containment chamber did you see that an alien life form they know nothing about and they have him in a sealed chamber where their gloves attached that are sealed off the containment chamber is completely sealed and as it is sealed, he can use the gloves to fiddle around and work on the life form. Notice our friend here is not breathing it in. There's a glass. You can see the reflection. There's a glass and there's a bunch of stuff between him and this freaking life form he knows nothing about. So why are these two hippopotamus ass eaters so freaking close to the alien head that looks like it's covered in fucking fungus? Oh my god, the scene makes me so mad. They try to animate the head. It becomes animated. You can see things pulsing underneath it. Like, this is so freaking disgusting. Now, they're like, ooh, yeah, now I gotta put on my mask. It was around her neck, though. You mean to tell me the mask was around your neck the entire time? And you're like, let me put my nose and mouth up against the freaking nasty alien with fungus on it, but let me not wear my freaking mask! It's like those people who wore their masks over their mouth, but not their nose. And you're like, what is even the purpose of you wearing? It. Vickers is like, turn it off. And it's only now they decide to put it into a container. And guess what happens? The thing's head explodes. That's freaking disgusting. You're probably already infected. I don't know why this guy is drinking so freaking hard because he's, I guess, depressed that the aliens are all dead. Something killed them off. The species is now extinct and he can't get answers. Seems like daddy problems to me. Like, why are you so upset about this? Like, I get it. But maybe it's because he's depressed about his own mortality, realizing that the engineers are mortal too but like you have the whole world to yourself now you've discovered the entire world don't you think the next order of business is to go around and get as much information as you can about these people so you can get the answers that you need you just see them dead and you're like okay i guess that's it nothing more to glean from here even though their bodies are literally in front of me david is seen talking to someone and bigger stops him and asks him what the person said they know who that is and he's like he wouldn't want me to tell you then she threatens him into telling her and and then she like wipes his face. <laughs> these characters are hilarious. Turns out David had carried one of these canisters back inside. Nobody knows this. He didn't tell anyone. And it's around this time, I already guessed that the guy, the, the CEO of the entire company that funded this mission in the first place, is probably alive. Because why wouldn't he be? David opens the canister like an idiot, while Shaw actually finds out that the engineers share the exact same DNA as human beings. They are human beings or the human beings are them meanwhile david takes the goo out and he's like you know what this is amazing i'm going to just uh you know small beginnings so while elizabeth's husband's drunk out of her mind he continues insulting david it's like david is shit testing him seeing if he'll stop behaving like that but of course being the way he is david realizes okay you're a piece of shit so i don't feel so bad about doing this then why they even made us in the first place why do you think your people made me we made you because we could. Can you imagine how disappointing it would be for you to hear the same thing from your creator? <laughs> I guess it's a good thing you can't be disappointed, huh? Yes. He was an asshole. He was an asshole to him. You don't be, don't be assholes to robots. It doesn't matter. 
Like, the fact that you're even talking to him like that means that you expect that he's going to have some kind of reaction. And then, yes, guess what David does? While he still has that glue on his fingertips that you can see him holding his finger up, he pours Holloway a drink. Sorry, but, you know, for the fact that the robot is the one making my drinks, I don't care if it's program directive is to not harm me. I'm not going to risk treating it like shit in case it decides to become self-aware and poison my goddamn food, which is exactly what David does. This guy's already drunk, so maybe he doesn't notice because, you know, his eye coordination's not working very well, and he downs the whole thing. Meanwhile, these two guys are told by their captain that there's some sort of glitch and there's a life form down there, but it might be nothing and that they should sleep tight because that's what you want to hear so you don't panic and stay level-headed on an alien planet where your ship is far away and they can't come rescue you. Good job, captain. These two make love. These two make love. These two make love. Something they worship or... I don't know. Kind of looks like... What's that? Then comes my favorite part of this movie. Because you know, you always gotta have a little bit of drama and entertainment. And at this point, I think they're just making fun of the whole stupid character trope because nobody can be this ridiculous. You're just, I think they're just doing this so that we want the main characters to die. Give them an excuse for something to happen. Because I guess nobody has any training whatsoever for this mission. Don't even know why they were picked. Because you see an alien space penis and you're like, let me, uh, let me sweet talk it. <laughs> Baby. Oh. She's mesmerized. Come here. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the scene from Elf with the raccoon. Hey! What's your name? <laughs> oh. Does someone need a hug? Can you guess how this is gonna go down? Exactly the same way. Because when you find an alien life form, you call it baby and sookie sookie talk it until it loves you so much. So these idiots adventure comes to a close very quickly and very violently. Hey, baby. <laughs> See what I mean? Maybe it's best that you don't violate the space of alien puss faces shaped like elephant trunks. Just say it. Especially if the thing is not running away from you. Redhead cuts the thing off and apparently its blood is acidic. All hell breaks loose as the alien goes inside of this guy's mouth. The way it looks though. The way it looks. Freaking alien love sausages over here. And the other guy whose uh, helmet is now damaged falls face first into the black goo because you know why not. Meanwhile, Shaw's husband realizes that he is very sick after he just slept with his wife and he tells nobody about this. In the morning, the crew goes back for the others. Off on his own, David finds a whole room filled with these canisters that are responsible for the black goo. He turns off his camera from this Vickers girl and he finds a chamber where the engineers are asleep. When the crew comes back, all these canisters that they saw before are leaking this black goo. This is when Shaw notices that her husband is very sick and they find the dead crew members. They immediately take take Holloway back to the ship and Vickers is like, I gotta get down there because I know these idiots are gonna bring the sick person that has God knows what back on the ship with all of us. David discovers a holographic recording of the engineers. So he uses that flute to activate it, and I'm like, oh, that's where that flute came from. That will be important later, much later. David watches closely as the engineer opens up a star map, which means that these guys are heavily advanced, and apparently they've been seeding life or destroying other planets. The one that they had highlighted last was Earth, which means that Earth is most likely scheduled for destruction. Oh no. In a stasis chamber, it's revealed that only one of the engineers is still alive. Holloway is rapidly decreasing in health, and Vickers is like, no, flame on. The pilot is like, yo, we can get him to the med bay and close him off and quarantine him from everyone. Don't know why they couldn't just set him up outside because, you know, like, you, you bring it inside, you don't know what it is, if it's on his clothes, like, maybe everybody has it. This is just, this is just really bad. One thing I would not have done was bring him inside. They even asked to set up a quarantine outside the ship. Why do they have to bring him all the way inside the, the ship, passing everybody else to go to the med bay? That makes no sense. But Holloway, realizing he's going to infect everyone, tells his wife that he loves her very much. And he says, do it. 
burn me. Shaw tries to fight him, but he gets death by fire and suicide. At least he did the right thing because he realized how sick he was and he did not want to risk his wife being sick. I could feel for her how horrible this must be. David treats her and is like, yeah, we gotta check you out. Oh, did you guys have sex or anything? Like with your husband? Turns out that she's pregnant and she has something inside of her. It's like a three month pregnancy, but it's not a baby. David sedates her thinking that they could just bring her back, I guess, while she's in cryo sleep and operate on it then. When this woman comes in, oh look, she's wearing a freaking hazmat suit. Finally! Took all of this for that to happen, huh? How strange. What's also interesting is that Shaw, the main character, is unable to have children. Something that she was always very sad about because she could not produce life. And now she's pregnant with a foreign entity alien thing that will kill her if she gives birth to it, if you know what I mean. As the woman's like, okay, she's knackered. Let's let's take her and pre prep, prepare her for cryo sleep. Shaw's like, you'll never take me alive. Then she goes to that surgery machine and performs a harrowing alien removal surgery on herself. And if people do not like body horror, probably will not like seeing this. It's freaking gross. There's a little bit of relief that this thing is pulled out of her, but then horror ensues as it breaks out of its amniotic sac and drops all the stuff back into her wound. She quickly gets stitched back up as this thing flails around. She gets out and freezes it or whatever it is that she does with it, decontamination. While all of this is happening, the captain realizes that the other crewmate that was left down there has been found and he's right at the opening of the ship. And I hate to say this, but if I'm walking out there and I see that somebody's helmet is broken and their legs are completely folded over on themselves like this, I would not go outside. I apologize. That person to me is dead at that point. Why would you go out there? Do you see how his legs look? Dude is literally folded up like a jumping spider. Seriously, what makes you think that he's alive? Why are you going towards him? What does it matter with these people? Seriously, everything that happens to them, they kind of deserve. Very hard to relate to the characters when that's the case. Of course, he is not dead, he is infected, and something is wrong with him, and he is super strong. After running over him and setting him on fire, that's when they are able to kill him. Shaw, fresh from surgery, finds out that the CEO is still alive, and he wants to go talk to the aliens. That is so gross. Ugh. David says, I found one of them alive. We find out that the CEO wants to live forever, and Vickers is actually his daughter. She warns him that you're gonna die down there. They go back into the area, and this guy, the captain, puts two and two together. First of all, he had found out that this area that they're under is not just some weird building. It's actually an alien ship that they're in, exploring right now. And the aliens, the engineers, are not from here. They're from some other planet, and they came here for bio-warfare, or to kill everything else that was on this planet or to experiment. Whatever the case is, this black goo stuff, this is cargo that they were carrying that they use as weapons of mass destruction. They were smart enough not to do that stuff on their home world and went to other places to go check it out and experiment. He wants to be out of there right now, but Shaw convinces him to at least stay and wait. He doesn't feel so good about this being a freaking alien ship and they are still inside. They wake up the engineer who's a little bit woozy and much larger than they are. Shaw tries to ask it questions like, why do they hate us? What is that black goo stuff and did it kill his people? She's asking all the real questions, but Whalen orders one of his soldiers to hit her. And the way that the engineer actually looks at her, he looks concerned. It is possible he can understand what they're saying. I mean, if they're the ones who did engineer humans, then they're lesser beings. I guess they'd be able to pick up on their language pretty easily. I hate that the scene was cut so short in the movie. I did find the extended version where the engineer actually talks. And the scene makes a whole lot more sense. But here they just try to make him look like this cold, calculating, mindless thing. And that is not the case. David translates and talks in the alien tongue, saying that this man doesn't want to die. And the old man goes on to saying how he's a god. Just like the engineer, how both of them are creators. And how he created David to be perfect. So it makes more sense when you see what happens in the scene. But all of that was cut out for some reason. <laughs> Whalen dies, 
David's head is off and the alien's like, all right, now I gotta go and do what I was gonna do and destroy Earth. These things came to my home and woke me up and have the audacity to demand shit of me? No, thank you. Shaw warns the rest of her crew that this thing is headed for Earth and that they have to stop it. Idris Alba's character is a badass and he tells the rest of the crew, okay, Vickers, anybody else who wants to leave, go to your escape pods right now because shit's about to get wild. Of course, Vickers runs away and the others decide to stay with their captain. They make the ship into a bullet and basically kamikaze themselves into the alien ship which causes it to crash it's also a nice quick merciful death for the humans but the alien ship is blown out of the sky and he's unable to go to earth Vickers is now on the ground with Shaw and these two idiots see the ship coming towards them and instead of going sideways you know what I mean instead of going sideways they're like let me run in the direction that the thing is ultimately going to land in because that makes fucking sense let me not go sideways which is a shorter distance mind you let me just keep running directly in the shadow of the thing that is long and will ultimately crush me anyway. I swear to God, the alien probably wanted to kill these things because he realizes that would be best for everybody. Shaw falls down and she does the most sensible thing because she's like, okay, I'm gonna get crushed. So let me just keep rolling away. While the other girl was like, oh no, I'm gonna get crushed. So I kept on walking or running in the direction of the freaking shadow of the thing. I cannot. <sighs> Human brains don't work like that. Human brains don't work like that. They immediately know, like, if I'm running from something, let me try get away from it as far as possible. I, I don't even know. Shaw gets a lifeboat with a hatchet, realizing that the alien thing that she gave birth to is still alive and fully grown. David calls in and tries to warn her that, yeah, that alien thing that um killed all of us over here, it's coming for you and it's really freaking angry. I know he's upset. He's like, bitch, you freaking thing my ship. And she opens the door and the big starfish comes out. She grabs her helmet, gets away. And the thing is like, kiss me, baby. Come here again. Give me a kiss. Kiss my toothy poom poom. And then it like does his mouth. And then when it relieves itself, it just goes dead. Shaw thinks she's stranded there. But David is glad that she's alive. Despite their differences, she saves David. He says that wasn't the only ship that the alien had, that there are many more. This is the point where we see how gentle she is with David. Apologizing to him for putting him inside a bag and having to cover up his face. I'm not gonna lie. I actually expected like some kind of romantic relationship between the two. And I would have been totally okay with that. Because it's Fastbender, you know? David's like, we can pile it back to Earth, you know? But instead of going to Earth, Shaw is like, I want answers. I want us to go to their world so we can find out what our origin was. Because they've already come this far. Why go back to Earth now? You know what I mean? Who cares about living and living a long time? But that's okay, because the end of the movie is where we get the most interesting segment. And this was the point, because I did see this movie in theaters, where I was so shocked. The alien engineer is pulsating. Something bursts from out of his chest. And when it gets up, the first thing I thought of was is, wait a minute, that thing looks like a freaking xenomorph. I was so upset because I'm like, no, the movie can't be over because now, now, now what is happening here? I realized that there were so many similarities between the two franchises, not realizing that this was actually a prequel to the Alien movies. <laughs> It was at that moment that I realized, holy shit, this is alien, bro. This is freaking alien. I love those times when I had watched the trailer or didn't watch a trailer for something or the trailer didn't show anything. And I went into this movie to watch with my mom, completely unaware as to what it was. I didn't even see that Ridley Scott made it. I was like, okay, whatever. It's just an alien movie, alien sci-fi. I'm all for it. As much as people hate this movie, I absolutely love it. And I love the one that comes after it. And because I love the alien franchise so much, when I saw this, I was like, I noticed the similarities, but I really wasn't thinking of it because it was called Prometheus. So I thought it was something completely different. I never really put the two together and be like, wow, this is just like this. Because I wasn't thinking about that, to be honest. I really wasn't. Until this section, when this thing with freaking human teeth bursts from out of the chest of the alien and then has an extended jaw. I knew. I knew for certain, like, this and the way the head looks. I'm like, yo, this this is a xenomorph. And then when I went home, I looked it up and I'm like, oh my God, this is freaking amazing. I'm just a sucker for sci-fi. Characters were painfully stupid. Made me want to slap their faces off, seriously. But I love Shaw. She was supposed to be, I guess, this version of Ripley. Then I found out that this was actually a soft reboot of Alien. But I am so hurt 
that there was not a third movie to finish off the series because, you know, half the answers I said we were going to get never got them. But it's okay, right? I still enjoy the movie and I'm always thinking and hoping to myself, maybe we'll get another one. You know, maybe. But that was Prometheus. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.